In this video, we will create a Gantt chart in Google Sheets. A Gantt chart is an excellent organizational tool that allows a quick visual view of the progress of a project. Making it on Google Sheets allows the project to be easily collaborative since any of the team members can edit it and view changes in real time. To make my own Gantt chart, I tried many approaches and found many potential sources online. However, None of them really achieved what I wanted until I found a blog post by Trevor Fox, which was a great starting point. His blog is linked in the description below. From there, I made several modifications to arrive at what I wanted. To begin, open a new sheet in Google Sheets. The first column is going to be our project name and the various tasks, and I'll start it in row 2 to allow for headers on the other columns. The second and third columns are going to contain the start and end date of the various tasks. Let's say this project will go from January 1st to June 1st. So I'll start by writing 01-01-2017 and once I do that this will then automatically become a date field and if I double click it I can actually select a different date if I would like and it's going to change it for me like that so you get a nice calendar view so I'll enter all of my dates in this format you can apply the formatting of a particular cell to other cells by highlighting the cells and then dragging this little plus over here down to the rest of the cells you want to format and it'll copy that format and it'll actually try to extrapolate for you and so it thinks that you want to progress by one day at a time here which might make sense but really what I wanted to do was make this the date format that I want and then I can change them as I see appropriate so my project starts on January 1st ends on June 1st and I want the various tasks to take place in between so I will change these here Okay, so now I have all of my dates, and the next column is going to be our timeline, which I'll go into detail later. And the last one is going to be the status of the particular task. To make things a little more readable, I'm going to just highlight these and make them all bold. And the same thing with the project name and the various tasks. Now the status can be one of three things for my template. It can either be complete, active, or upcoming. So to make those my options, I'm going to right click on this cell, I'll click on data validation, and then the criteria that I want will be from a list of items, and those items that are going to be complete, active, and upcoming. And I want to show these as a drop down. So I'll say save, and now I've got these options, so I can choose complete, for example, over here. And again, to spread this to the other cells, I'm going to drag this formatting down. And so then I have this drop down for all of these tasks. The timeline section is going to be the most complicated one out of all of these. And I will, of course, link my template sheet in the description below so that you can use it when you're starting off instead of writing these formulas by hand but I want to go through what the formulas actually do in case you want to customize this sheet for yourself. So the first thing that I will actually modify is going to be the timeline for task 2. And our whole goal here is to make some kind of a bar chart representation that's going to show where the task actually belongs in the overall timeline of the project and whether the task is complete or ongoing or still upcoming and to represent that with various colors. To perform this operation, to make this chart, I'm going to use the sparkline functionality in Google Sheets, which is going to allow me to create a bar chart inside of a given cell instead of making a separate graph. So to start it off, I'll select the box that I want, and I'll start to type my formula starting with an equal sign, and I'll say sparkline, and the arguments to Sparkline are going to be first the data and then the various specifications. So the data will be enclosed in curly braces and so will the chart specification. 
So then the data that I want to represent here is going to be two stacked bars. The first one is going to go to the start date of the task and the second is going to go from the start date to the complete date. So I'm going to reference things here and in order to use dates as numbers and be able to subtract one from another I'm going to use the int function. So I'll say int of and here I'll say cell B4 so that's going to be the start date minus int of and here I want to reference the start of the project but since I'm going to generalize this this format to the other cells I want to fix which cell I'm referencing to because I always want to reference it to the same start date of the project and therefore I'm going to use dollar sign B dollar sign 2 in order to fix that to that particular cell instead of propagating it like I would otherwise. I'll show you what I mean a little bit later on when I actually spread the format to the other cells. So this will be my first bar and then the next piece of data here is going to be int of C4 minus int of B4. Alright so I have my two pieces of data and then I want to specify what kind of a chart I want this to be. So here I'm going to say chart type. I want it to be a bar chart. And then I specify the colors of the various segments that I have. So I'll say color 1 is going to be white. This is going to make the first segment invisible and that's exactly what we want. You'll see the result in just a moment. And the second color, so here I'll specify color 2. And for now, for the moment, just for illustration, let's make this green. And that's it. So this is what I would get if I were to do that. However, this is not exactly what I want. So first of all, let me spread this out a bit to make it more clear. What I really want is this entire space to take up the space of the entire project, all the way from January 1st to June 1st, and not just like this, because this currently is only going to January 17th. So the first modification that I'm going to make is after the color, I'm going to specify that I want the entire length of that cell, the maximum, to be int of $c$2, so the entire project, minus int of $b$2. And that's going to make it so that now the entire length of this corresponds to the length of the entire project and now this is just a bar in that one location. So if I am to spread this to the other cells, then this already is starting to look like a Gantt chart in the sense that each bar represents the duration of the given task nice and visually and I can spread this to the first one as well. Now the reason I started with the second as opposed to the first is because this calculation here to me makes a bit more sense starting with the second one because in the first one you'll be basically subtracting the same date from the same date and you're going to get a value of zero whereas with this one it makes a bit more sense but again you could have equivalently started with the first one. Now as far as the propagation that I was talking about notice that I had typed an int of b4 minus int of dollar b dollar two. If I look at the next one it becomes int of b5 minus and the key here is that the whole dollar b dollar two the dollar makes it stay constant regardless of your propagation and so therefore while those other values changed dynamically the ones that were referenced with a dollar stay fixed and that's important because we always want to reference the same start and end dates of the entire project now this already looks like what i want in effect however i want to make this even nicer and to do that i'm going to introduce some more colors so you can actually change the colors based on if statements and logical statements. So the chart type is bar color one is white. So notice the first part over here is always white. So it's invisible. The second part is always green, but that's not really what I want. So instead I'm going to replace this with an if statement. I'm going to say if, and here I'm going to start referencing my fifth column, the status, and I'm going to say if, e4 is equal to the word complete then I actually want the color to be gray 
And then the, the way that things work is I can provide a third argument, and that's going to be like the else. And so here I can say, for example, comma green. And close that out. And now everything that is marked as complete, as soon as I propagate this all, is going to be marked with gray. And if I change any of them to, let's say, active, it's going to become green. So exactly what I specified. As long as the status is complete, it's going to turn gray. But again, that's not fully what I want. So instead over here, with the else condition, I'm going to change that to another if statement, an embedded if statement. And this is where things get kind of ugly and complicated. So try to follow along. And I'm doing this only so that you can make modifications in the future if you would so like. Otherwise, just look at the template that I'm going to link below. So here I'll say if the date today, where I can use this function today, is greater than C4, that is the end date, I'm going to mark this as red. And otherwise, if, and I'm going to use an AND statement to combine two conditions, if today is greater than B4 and today is less than C4, so if we're currently inside of the project window, and E4 is still upcoming, which is not good, it should already be active, then I'm going to mark this as dark red. And otherwise, if and today is greater than B4, and today is less than C4, so again, if we're inside of this project window, then I'm going to mark this as yellow. And if E4 is equal to active, then I'm going to mark this as yellow. Otherwise, I'm going to mark it as green. And then I have to close out each one of these parentheses. So hopefully I do this the right number of times. Otherwise, it'll be a parse error. And so it looks like that potentially worked. So let me test it. So if I change this to active, it turns red because we are currently past that date and it's still active as we wanted. If I make it upcoming, that's also no good. It's already past that end date. So let me mark that as complete. And let's propagate this property through all of our cells. and see if things work as we expect. So this one is active and we're past that date, so that's going to be red. Let's make this one active as well. And currently, today is March 29th, so we are within this window and so it turns yellow. And let's say this one is upcoming. Well, we're already within this window. It's March 29th, past March 26th, and therefore it's going to be dark red because this is still upcoming. And finally, this one, let's make it upcoming, and it's going to be green because we're not within that window yet, and that task has yet to come. So this does exactly what I expected it to do. Again, you can modify those colors based on the methodology that I just presented. There are a couple more features that I want to go over that will make this a little bit nicer. The first one is going to be a burn down in the last row here, and that's just going to show you I'll make it bold. It's just going to show you the progress of the overall project in terms of the days that have passed. And so for this one, I'll use another spark line. And this will be simpler. Here, what I want is the data just to be today minus the start of the project. And once more, it's going to be a bar chart where color one is going to be black and once more the max is going to be int c2 minus int b2. I don't bother with the dollar signs here because I'm not going to be generalizing this to any other cells. It's just going to remain in this one and that's it. So this shows you then the progress and it shows us that we are currently over here, which makes it much easier to visualize where we are in the scope of the overall project. And 
one more enhancement here is for this first line here. I wanted to represent kind of the weeks of the project. And so once more, I'm going to use sparkline. And I'm going to say this is equal to sparkline of, and here my data is going to be a bunch of segments, each one of length seven for the duration of the entire project, the seven corresponding to the number of weeks in the project. So it'll split it up into weeks. And so in order to do this, I'm going to use a couple of functions. So first of all, before I actually do this, I'll just close this for now and not do anything. I want to show you what I'm going to use. So just in a random cell over here, I'm going to start typing. And the first one I'm going to do is using a repetition function. I'm going to repeat the number seven with a comma after it. And I'm going to repeat it basically the number of times that seven divides the span of the project. But I, I want to make that an integer, so I'm going to floor it. Floor will basically just cut off whatever decimal you have after the division operation is performed. So I'm going to say floor of int c2 minus int of b2 divided by, so the whole quantity, divided by seven. So then you can see that it's going to repeat this that many times because there's a number of weeks that there are. If In fact, if I just take that calculation on its own right here, and I put that over here, have an extra parenthesis there. If I do that, I get this number, 21.57. And of course, I can't repeat it that many times. So instead, I want to floor that and make it 21 repetitions because I have 21 full weeks. However, I also then have a little remainder and basically what I would then want to do is add another number to here corresponding to the rest of the number of days that there are. And so for that I can use the mod function. I can say mod, the modulo function, int c2 minus int b2 and then what I want to divide that by to find the remainder by 7 and you see that there are 4 days left over here. So that's what I want to tack on to the end. And so another function that we're going to use, because this is not the kind of data that Sparkline will accept, it'll need data in each cell separately in order to create your chart, I'm going to use the split function. And so here I'm going to take this and I'm just going to add split this thing that I created and split it on commas. That's what I'm specifying right here. And if I do that, then you can see that now I get each one of those sevens in a separate cell of its own. And I'm going to tack on this four onto the end. So to combine that all together, then I'm going to take this, put it into Sparkline. And here, again, I'll, I'll denote my first set of data and my bar chart parameters. And so I'll say split here. And I'll throw in also my mod. Okay, so now I have that data over here. Of course, it doesn't plot anything yet because there is no specification here. And so then I'm just going to make this another bar chart. Where the first color is going to be white, but again, you can change this. And the second color is going to be light blue. And now if I hit enter, you see what I'm going to get. This is going to split that timeline into these blocks of length seven, each one for a week, except for the last one, which is going to be the remainder for the duration of days. So now our chart is complete, and I just erased those three entries over here just to make it cleaner so that you can use this as a template later on. And here I can change the name, by the way, to Gantt Chart Template. And if you want to expand this, if you want to add more tasks, one of the nice things is that if you take this, for example, and you hit something like Control X to cut it, and you paste it somewhere else, it's still going to reference things properly. It's still going to reference those things that you specified properly. And so you can directly do that. And then if I want to expand these things down as well, well, I can do the same thing I've done before. I highlight all of them. 
I drag it down. Now each one of these dates, of course, is going to change inappropriately, but the task numbers will actually increment as long as you keep them task 1, task 2. In general, you should probably change the task names to what you're actually doing and then modify them appropriately. But yeah, this is what's going to happen. And you're still going to have all the nice properties over here with the drop-down menus and whatnot. And so you can expand this chart to be any size that you want. And likewise, you can also get rid of various entries if you want. So for example, if I, if I don't want these things, well, I can simply highlight them and hit delete and that'll be gone. This still leaves the formatting right here. So here I'll hit Control Z to undo that. Instead, I can highlight all of these. So here I hit one of them, then I held Shift and clicked on the other row in order to highlight everything in its range. And then I can right click and say, delete these rows. And then all of their formatting is gone and this is brought up to that level as well. So that's another way to do the same thing. So altogether, we have seen how to create a Gantt chart in Google Sheets. Everything here is customizable, so feel free to use this as a starting point or to use it as is. The chart we made in this video is available at the link in the description below.